Representatives from some 40 countries met in Jeddah over the weekend to discuss a peaceful solution to the ongoing war in Ukraine. The talks were hosted by Saudi Arabia, which managed to use its diplomatic leverage and get BRICS nations such as China and India to attend. But Russia was excluded from the meeting. The Jeddah talks were held 18 months into the Russia-Ukraine conflict and in the backdrop of a changing international order. Among the points discussed was Zelensky's 10-step program for peace, which includes Russia's withdrawal from Ukrainian territory. Ukraine has hailed China's participation in the Jeddah talks as a diplomatic win, as Beijing hasn't yet spoken out against Russia and continues to maintain close diplomatic relations with the country. The pro-Kiev nations had failed to secure China's presence in the first round of talks hosted by Denmark in June. The next meeting for peace is due in about six weeks. Kremlin has already dismissed the Jeddah talks, calling it a doomed Western attempt. And now to further discuss Saudi Arabia's peace plan on Ukraine, joining me now from Istanbul is Vefi Baysan. He is an associate professor at Ibn Haldun University. And from London, Omar Ashour. He is a professor of security and military studies and founding chair of critical security studies at Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talks. So, Omar, let me begin with you. Has there been any breakthroughs from the latest talks in Saudi Arabia? I wouldn't call them breakthroughs, but there are some uh, very interesting developments, uh, including one for Saudi Arabia to host uh, the, me the meeting. That's, uh, that's a development. Second, uh, the Chinese position, which uh, seemed more and more to be um, um, uh, heading uh, in, a, in a different direction than the Russian one, uh, especially after they proposed the 12-point uh, uh, peace plan. Um, and now the, the attendance, um, um, apparently Ukraine, all the Ukrainian public statements are seem to be more and more welcoming the Chinese, the new Chinese positions. Uh, but also the gathering of the uh, 40 nations uh, in this conference, which uh, which is sort of a, the, the, there was no global south uh, united uh, stance from the, from the beginning of this war. Uh, clearly, uh, every country almost in the global south has a different uh, perception to it. Uh, but clearly there is more and more uh, sympathy and more and more realization on issues that has to do with uh, food security specifically, but also energy security, that that conflict is affecting everybody uh, else and therefore de-escalation and possibly finding a peace plan uh, is, uh, is a very uh, um, uh, beneficial for, for all sides. Uh, but the, the, the last bit that basically started all this conflict is the, 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 the bit that has to do with territorial integrity. Uh, apparently, there, there is a uh, territorial integrity seems to be uh, an issue that um, all 40 nations are agreeing upon. China specifically has issues with its own. Uh, well, it's very sensitive to that issue because of the Tibet, because of yes. the Xinjiang, because even of Taiwan. Uh, so that specific issue is, uh, I think, it's quite highlighted uh, by by all sides, and and basically it's benefiting Ukraine in that because its territorial uh, integrity was compromised. So, Omar, uh, so Vepi, uh, what's your take on this summit? Is this part of the efforts to swing global south to Ukraine's side, as claimed by Russia? Well, that's definitely a very important um, step, because we can't even say safely that it is unprecedented that at this scale, the global south involving in um, a global crisis. So that's very, very important. And it's done by Saudi Arabia, namely by MBS, by the Prince Mohammed bin uh, Salman. And of course, it's aiming to yield some uh, results, but it's very early to say anything about it. First of all, this call came by President Ukraine's President Zelensky. And uh, the, the, as, as we can see in the official statement, that the Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty should be uh, respected. And they all agree on that. But mm -hmm. of course, Russia has uh, different ideas about it. So in this regard, uh, if you remember that the previous meeting in June in Copenhagen, they did not produce an official statement about it. So I think the most important outcome is that now we have an official statement and there is a will and now Saudi Arabia mediating, which is a very important, taking an active role in global crisis. China's role is very important here. We can say, although Russia is not present, which is, I think, a great miss there, but probably in the forthcoming meetings they may take place uh, once the terms are more clear and settled. Um, China seems to be 
uh, uh, kind of um, acting instead uh, of uh, of Russia in, in, in to, to mediate between the uh, global south and uh, and Russia, in my opinion. Yes. And I think in that regard, Saudi Arabia's involvement is very, very important. So I believe Omar, everyone agrees that China's import, uh, involvement in such a summit is very important since it had not attended uh, the Copenhagen talks uh, held back in June. So. Uh, despite, of course, being invited. So what's changed? I think what changed is a, a few things. One of them is the Russian position vis-a-vis -vis the 12th peace plan that was proposed by China that also included a, a point on territorial integrity um, and also uh, issues of the nuclear safety and uh, humanitarian crises, but also a nudge at NATO uh, within, uh, you know, in terms of pressuring uh, neighbors and forming uh, alliances and so on. Uh, but I think uh, Russia did not interact enough with, with that 12 uh, point peace plan on one side. On the other side, uh, there, there was the, the, the mobilization that happened uh, in NATO countries and in uh, countries that are 50 plus countries that are supportive of Ukraine on one side or the other. Um, um, I, I think it showed that the, the, the Ukrainians will not collapse on the battlefield. Um, uh, they, they were innovative, they were adaptive. Um, so, so no military solution, no interactions with, with the Chinese 12-point um, uh, peace plan. So now what? Uh, so I, th I think this, this both uh, serves uh, or, or directs China towards uh, more or less expanding uh, this uh, uh, attempt to form a peace proposal, um, uh, uh, expand this yes. alliance uh, with the larger countries from the global south and have more and more role and impact. Uh, perhaps this will pressure uh, the Russian leadership to uh, to negotiate and, and end this conflict. Yes. So, VP, uh, representatives from uh, some 40 countries uh, took part in the Saudi-hosted talks, um, except for Russia. You mentioned it. You said it is a mistake. So why do you think Russia was uh, excluded and is it viable to have uh, peace talks without Russia's presence? Well, of course not. Uh, you're absolutely right. Russia got to be there because it's uh, part of crisis, part of problem, part of everything. I mean, peace cannot be established without uh, Russia or without any, any, any side involved in that regard. So that's very uh, important. But probably, probably this summit also... Uh, uh, quite an indicative uh, for Russia to see how the world is viewing issues there and how different they are and how persistent uh, they are because there are many uh, thorny issues there. First of all, the territory integrity. Um, now Russia uh, have different ideas about it, but also, also it's, it's equally important the uh, is to mention is the human rights uh, violations and recorded uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity. So this is um, uh, uh, makes things very difficult. Therefore, Russia should be offered uh, maybe a, a viable exit strategy. What that may be, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. And probably even the 40 countries uh, not really have clear idea about it because we don't see it in the official um, statement. But here, it's, it's, it's extremely important to mention also the Turkey's uh, uh, grain deal when uh, at the time of really crisis where UN and US or EU did not uh, successfully convince uh, Russian administration, but Turkey did name the President Erdogan did it. And and it helped the world uh, economies, especially the poor at, at, at starvation. So I think any meeting, any uh, initiative towards establishing peace in that part of the world is very, very important. But sooner or later, definitely Russia will be part of it. So Omar, will this summit have some political and strategic ramifications on Russia-Saudi relations? I mean, is it likely to add... Uh, more strain, and what do you think? I mean, what does Saudi Arabia want to wanted to want to achieve by holding these talks? I think uh, Saudi Arabia wants to um, uh, to lead in terms of the peace diplomacy. It's so uh, the, you know the success or the the the, the, the success of the um, uh, securing some of the food security by the uh, the grain deal that was that, that was more or less led by by, by Turkey. Uh, it, it saw the impact uh, of uh, others, and perhaps now it's it's uh, it's attempting to, to to lead on that of de-escalating, uh, perhaps uh, re resolving uh, 
uh, one of the most uh, um, intense uh, wars in this uh, century, or, or the most intense war uh, in this century, uh, with impact on the on the whole uh, region, including issues of energy security and food security. If it mm -hmm. did that, I think it will, it will place it at a different level. So yes. I think the, this is one of the, the motivations. Uh, but but the, I think one of the issues as well that uh, it's very thorny on that is uh, because the, the, I think the most of the talks is about uh, President Zelensky's ten. Uh, points uh, uh, piece, and one one of them is the seventh one that has to do with special tribunal tribunals to prosecute Russian war crimes. Yes, uh, and I think this is a very thorny subject uh, for 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 all sides. So I think this is uh, this is something that will uh, will have an impact on the talks later on when the Russians come in. So Vepi, what does this latest summit tell us about Saudi Arabia's uh, Crown, uh, Crown Prince's international standing? Is he fit to carve out a role for the kingdom? as a mediator in the long run, maybe? Well, probably uh, this is what Saudi Arabia and, and namely the uh, Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salwan always wanted to uh, portray himself, uh, take an active role in, in world uh, international politics. So for that regard, having the summit in Saudi Arabia is very, very important. And uh, we should take it very seriously. At least 40 countries uh, were present. There were representatives of 40 countries present there. And you can see that Saudi Arabia is trying to uh, um, establish a role of a mediator in world uh, politics. But in doing so, they uh, probably uh, want to maintain their uh, neutral position between Ukraine and, and, and Russia. And uh, their relations with Russia is very, very important. We know that, as well as the relation with uh, China. So it's it's very important, especially uh, if we look at that when they uh, the rest of Gulf countries signed the Abraham Accords and with Israel, the relations are developing further. So Saudi Arabia, in a, in that regard, trying to uh, establish its own identity and where yes. a dependable and trustworthy uh, partner in world politics. So uh, one last uh, question, Omar, very quick, if you will. So do Turkey and Saudi Arabia coordinate in such efforts to bring an end to the war in Ukraine, or do they have competing interests in the conflict? I think uh, overall, uh, if you looked at the macro picture, I think the interests align well. Both countries uh, want uh, the escalation of this conflict. It's affecting their economy. It's affecting their, uh, their, their food security, their energy security. And also, it will be a major contribution to, in terms of world peace by, by both countries. Uh, yes. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we will see how this develops because this is an ongoing story. So there, there, we don't know um, how uh, the, the issues on the battlefield will determine the talks. So the battlefield right. has uh, the, the final say. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on the battlefield, which will affect these talks a lot. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.